A new FIRS boss targets tax to GDP ratio of 18% in three years. That will be our second hot topic for the day on the show. And of course, we're going to have uh, off the press where we'll look at the headlines that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyam Agaji. It promises to be a very wonderful midweek and we do hope that you're having that positive mindset with you. Today is Wednesday Frenzy. Whatever comes to your mind that is positive, do it to improve your life and improve the condition of livelihood in our country. Our country is ours to build and every day we try to encourage you to do one good thing that will add up to making our country a better place. We will go straight to the things that are trending. Uh, yesterday on the news, I, I just saw a story where the police were co complaining that some of the reasons why crime is festering in our society is because of the judiciary. They blamed it on the judiciary that they're not doing what is supposed to be done. Uh, a case in point was that uh, there were serial people or serial um, uh, jailbirds, as they put it, that will go into the prisons and come out and still continue to be uh, what they went to the prison in the first place, uh, the reason for which they went to the prison in the first place. So if you're a thief, you go into jail and within a short time you're back and then you're still committing the kind of uh, atrocities that took you to jail in the first place. So they were saying, Possibly it's uh, because the sentences are not severe enough or the judiciary is not doing what they're supposed to do. That's why these people return to the society and continue in the kind of menace that they bring to the society and all that. So if the police is blaming the judiciary, the judiciary will now blame the police and everybody blames everybody else. And at the end of the day, we blame, blame the devil. Uh, that's where every sin, every atrocity just goes to end. It is the devil that sent me to do this. It is the devil that is causing this and all that. Why not we take the responsibility as ourselves? So is the police doing better than the judiciary? Is the judiciary doing better than the police? Is everybody who is involved in fighting crime and criminality doing what they are supposed to do? It's a question we should ask ourselves. And all of us should ask ourselves, are we taking up our responsibilities in such a way that our society will be better? Now, uh, without sounding, having to sound like uh, maybe a, a priest or a, a man of God, as they call themselves now, um, there is a scripture that I usually like, and that is uh, the story about Hezekiah, who was told that he was going to die, and he should prepare his house. Hezekiah said to God, remember all the good things I have been doing. That was his bargaining chip. He said God should remember all the good things that he has been doing. And because of that, he was spared 15 more years. Now, if Nigeria calls upon you, or if God calls upon you today, what will people remember about you? What will your country remember about you? What will God remember about you? What are you doing positively that impacts positively as well on the people or your country? You have to ask yourself that question every day. What have I done to improve Nigeria? And in doing that, it doesn't mean that you have to go and tie a road or build a bridge across a river or produce or give electricity to a community or the big things, but one small thing adding up to the big things will do once in a while. So ask yourself that question all the time. Why not, why not we stop the blame game? A new administration comes, it blames the previous administration till it finishes its eight years in blame and not doing anything positive that the people will look and applaud them. Uh, anybody comes into office, they blame the previous people who sat on that seat. They do renovations of offices. We heard uh, in one state that um, an office was going to be renovated for 50 billion naira because a new administration has come in, even though the, same, uh, the new administration is of the same party. Uh, well, they came out afterwards to refute that claim that it, they never said something like that. But maybe there was a rumor, there was a whisper here and there and all that. So why do we keep blaming people? Why do we keep seeing faults in the people who have come before us or the other person 
and not look at ourselves. Um, Sonny Neji had a song that he said, we don't like to blame the other man. Okay, well, uh, still talking about the judiciary, the details are that the police in Lagos State pointed fingers at the judiciary saying it was partly responsible for the increase in crime and criminality in the state. The Commissioner of Police, Lagos State Police Command, CP Idou Omohua, hinted at this on Tuesday, September 18, while parading the alleged killers of the personal assistant to Senator Solomon Olamilekon Adiola, uh, also known as Yayi. Now, he said that three suspects were jailbirds who found their way back into society and became even more vicious. He explained that the suspects were clad in military camouflage uh, when they flagged down the deceased vehicle along Ojurubega, pretending to be law enforcement officers. They then demanded for the vehicle papers, pushed him into his vehicle and shot him. Also recovered from the suspects were six live cartridges, six expended ammunition, six live ammunition and military gear. The arrested suspects include Fred Aziz, 43 years old, and he's a Lagosian, Odudu Michael, 33 years old from Delta State, and Adedigba Shegun, 26 years old from Ibadan. Items recovered from them are one brand new brownie pistol, uh, with three rounds of ammunition, one uh, Beretta pistol with three rounds of live ammunition, one locally made cut to size pistol with six live cartridges, six expended cartridges, military gear comprising of military vest, military jungle hat, military pistol hosted, and military jungle boots which they used in the perfection of their crime that night. So now you understand when the military tells you that you never wear their uniform unless you're part of them. Also recovered was one red Honda CVR with registration number EKY 276JD, which was one of the vehicles they also robbed on the fateful night. Omohua also revealed that a gang, which is being armed and financed by one Nigerian-born Alhaji based in Benin Republic, specializes in robbing motorists of their unregistered vehicles, targeting uh, basically brand new cars or Tokumbo cars. They have confessed that they have successfully carried out five operations and their modus operandi is stationing not too far from Bega bus stop to spot unregistered oncoming vehicles on the road. Now, the spotter will then, this is how they operate, the spotter will then uh, call their gang members who are usually dressed in military fatigue stationed ahead of the beggar bus stop to inform them of approaching targeted vehicle. The gang members will naturally flag down the vehicle and believing that the gang members were law enforcement officers, the motorist will naturally drive to a halt. The police boss explained that the Al-Haji responsible for funding the gang has several similar cells across the country which aims to target unregistered vehicles, rob them and move them to him in Bene Republic. Okay, so like I said, this is where you understand when the military or the police will tell you that you should never ever wear their uniform if you're not part of them because a lot of people are using it to do uh, unthinkable things and naturally if you flag down somebody who is a law-abiding citizen of Nigeria, he will stop. Law enforcement is stopping me, let me stop. And then you do not know that they are criminals. And then you also have people who are doing what we call the one chance. A lot of people have fallen victim and it's on the increase nowadays. One chance is on the increase. So police and all the relevant authorities should do something about it and stem this tide. Uh, well, one of, one, of the, one of the things that the government can do is to make sure that uh, buses or cars that are uh, registered and known as safe buses should be made available to everybody. So if I'm coming to work at 4 o'clock, I should have a bus that will take me to wherever I'm going to. And if I'm closing at 6 or 7, I should have a bus as well that I can trust that will take me anywhere. Uh, we, we thank the government for bringing the train. But, you know, if you're not going to mile two from Marina, you may not have that opportunity to ever ride on that train. So if there are other routes that they, uh, the train will be plying, uh, they should hasten up and make sure that these routes also are working so that everybody in Lagos State can benefit from that, um, uh, that very lofty project of the government. So for whoever has fallen victim to this... Um, 
uh, robbers, these criminals, this everybody that is being allowed by the judiciary according to the, the police, uh, well, our hearts go to you. But we do hope that something will be done uh, about our security situation in Lagos State. Lagos, Lagos used to be like one of the safest states uh, in some months past or some years past. Now it shouldn't go back to the chaos that uh, we've been seeing uh, in other states. And we heard about Lagos when we were growing up and hearing about Lagos that ah, it's a very, a very a place for criminals, a place for uh, all sorts of stories until we got to Lagos and found out that it was not the same as we were being told. Well, there's another story as well, and that is that the youths are, have protested in Ogun State to demand justice over Mobad's death. Remember that it's been a craze uh, these few days. Youths on Tuesday staged a peaceful uh, protest in Abeokuta, the Ogun State capital, demanding justice for the late Nigerian singer, Ilerio Lua Aloba, popularly known as Mobad. Uh, well, we have this story from Ogun State, but there are some, some other states that we also heard that some, there were some peaceful uh, protests as well for uh, calling for justice for Mobad, the singer. Mobad died last Tuesday at the age of 27 in an unclear circumstance, with many Nigerians demanding a thorough probe into his death. The youths, all in black t-shirts, began the rally from the popular uh, Pansheke market, in the state capital and went through Okeoluo and other locations in the capital. They carried placards bearing various inscriptions like justice for Mobad and asked the government to arrest Naira Mali and Sam Larry, amongst others. These are the people who are being fingered uh, of uh, tormenting Mobad uh, psychologically, if not physically. In so many videos that have um, trended online, we saw physical assault and all. So people are saying that even though the, the immediate cause may have been uh, from wherever he went for, uh, to for treatment, maybe an injection was given and all that, but the, the activities, the circumstances leading up to that moment are more important than what just happened at that time because depression and everything had set in because this young man was being uh, molested almost on daily basis or weekly basis. So addressing journalists, the protesters insisted that Nigeria police must bring their alleged suspects uh, to book. So that is what they said and we do hope that justice will be done. We have seen a lot of people, you know, even some signees of the record label uh, pulling out of this record label now. Uh, those people who are still there uh, uh, so even right now in Lagos we hear that there's a protest this morning uh, regarding justice for or calling for justice for Mobad. Now a takeaway from all that has been happening for this last week uh, because of this Mobad's dead is that if Nigerians say yes to a thing they, you cannot hold them back. So if they rally around something, they support something, you cannot hold them back. And I ask myself the question, if we can rally behind a cause and have the kind of success story that we record all the time when we do this, why can't we do the same when it comes to elections? When it comes to selecting the leaders that will lead us, why just sit behind and grumble after people have been put in offices and we probably do not like them enough. When we talk about people voting for reality shows, watching reality shows, you, you will be amazed at the numbers that you find people voting for housemates, for this, for that. When you talk about uh, supporting football clubs, you'll be amazed uh, at what length people can go. Doing Thanksgiving in churches and carrying goats and cows to churches over clubs that they, do, they may not ever see any of uh, the players live or even see their jersey uh, somewhere that they can touch. But they're doing this. So if you can have passion for everything else, why not ha also have passion for who leads you so that you can make our country better? So everybody is uh, organizing, everybody is uh, uniting to make sure there's justice for not just Mobad, but uh, for other people who may have suffered this kind of psychological trauma at the hands of the people who were supposedly uh, going to help them. 
Well, we may not have all the stories, we may not have all the sides of the stories, but the one side of the story that we have seen on the internet, all the videos that we have seen, uh, didn't really uh, speak well of this record label or some of the people who are the bosses in this music industry. Now everybody is saying that the music industry is very dark. Well, we only enjoy the music, and this is also a call for us to listen to the lyrics of the music, because when we listen to the lyrics of the music, there may be uh, hidden uh, messages that if we take note of, we will know where the projection is headed. So, Mobad, rest in peace. But for everybody who may have had a hand in his death, we pray that justice be done. Whoever may be framed, uh, maybe because of some malicious accusations that were not founded, maybe because someone is trying to uh, grind an ox, someone is trying to, you know, have his pound of flesh and he is accused uh, wrongly, may these people be exonerated. But whoever is guilty uh, should face the full wrath of the law. And we should begin to see some sanity, at least in some sectors. Entertainment industry is one of the greatest or the biggest industries in Nigeria. And if something evil uh, creeps into it, then there's problem. So whoever is responsible, whatever um, agency is responsible, should do something about it. Now, NNPC also has retired employees with 15 months to retirement. That is another story that also caught our interest uh, within uh, the few hours before now. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has compulsorily retired all management staff with less than 15 months to statutory retirement. In uh, an early Tuesday morning announcement, the company declared that the retirement of the affected workers was immediate with immediate effect, stressing uh, that um, the move would support its business objective. The oil firm also recently announced the appointment of three new executive vice presidents as part of the ongoing shakeup in the multi-billion dollar national company. It named uh, Orisa Meyua Eyesong as the new executive vice president of Upstream, Olalekon Ogunleye, executive vice president of Gas, Power and New Energy, and Ade Dakbo Shegun as executive vice president of Downstream. The announcement, which was posted on the company's X uh, handle early Sunday, stated that the appointment of the new EVPs was with immediate effect. And this led to the compulsory retirement of the company's three former executive vice presidents, including Abdul Kabir Ahmed, Gaspar and New Energies, Adokie Tambo, or Tombo Meye upstream, and Adeyumi Adetunji downstream. In July last year, remember, the national oil firm, formerly known as Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, transformed fully into a commercial, a commercial entity, becoming the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. And the official transition into a private entity means that the oil company is now being regulated in line with the provisions of the Companies and Allied Matters Act. The group chief finance officer of the firm is therefore expected to bear additional tax of ensuring the liquidity of the group, as well as the efficient allocation of capital to its businesses based on returns and business relations. Also, the federal government is to halt all forms of funding for projects and sundry purposes of the firm compared to what was obtainable in 45 years of the NNPC before it transitioned to a limited liability company. The oil company has since been operating as a limited company run by a chief executive officer and his executive vice president. What Nigerians are asking is how much influence this NNPC still has in the oil market. Is it still the, the, the be-all as it used to be? Is it because of it that we will find out the prices of uh, oil? Because whenever they set a price, every other person just toes the line. So what are they really? What are their functions? What are their role? How much powers do they have right now? NNPC is now like a private company. Are they operating as a private company or they still dictate to uh, that market, the oil market? Now everybody is afraid because uh, the marketers are saying that the fuel might go up and keep going up. Uh, well, if it is going up and it keeps going up and the Naira is still going down and down all the time, I wonder what it will be 24 months from now or 12 months from now. 
something has to be done about this. Well, those are some of the trending things that uh, we wanted to bring to you. We do hope that you get, uh, get some uh, pages of the newspaper also and read as well. But we are going to do more on the newspaper when we return to take off the press. Stay with us.